When a cheetah is brought into the zoo, a concerned zookeeper notices its odd behavior. She soon confirms that the cheetah is sick and decides to help it recover. He'll just have to watch to see what happens next. It was Monday mid-morning when the Savannah Refuge Zoo in Russia received a rescued cheetah from Namibia, Africa. Myla, one of the zookeepers at the place, had just finished making the cheetah's enclosure as homely as possible. She was the best zookeeper in the zoo and had been entrusted with making sure the cheetah adjusted well to the new environment. Myla's love and care for animals were the reasons that made her the best zookeeper at Savannah Refuge Zoo. She seemed to understand the animals in a surreal way, and the animals understood her in return. A few moments after the cheetah had settled in, Myla carefully went inside its enclosure and huddled in a safe compartment from where she could watch. She wanted to see for herself the cute cat that came from Africa. The cheetah was intriguing and beautiful. She had always been captivated by the beauty and grace of the world's big cats, especially the ones with spotted furs. She had spent many days reading about them, dreaming of one day encountering these majestic creatures up close. If she was honest, this was the reason she chose to work in a zoo. The Savannah Refuge Zoo hadn't had any big cats up to now, but that would change. Seeing the cheetah from up close was a dream come true for Myla. She gazed at the cat, eager to touch its fur, but then she remembered that it was a rescued animal that hadn't gotten used to human contact. At the moment, it was nothing but a predator, and a scared one at that. Getting close was simply too risky. She stayed for a while, watching it, marveling at its presence. The cat lay at the end of the open room, stealing glances at her from time to time. It almost seemed like she was wondering why the woman was staring. What should we call you? Mia asked the cheetah. She had a habit of talking to the animals, claiming that they could hear and understand humans if trained to do so. I'm thinking of Luna. It sounds so majestic and classy, just like you. She thought. The cheetah just blinked at her, as if to say, I like that name too. With that, the new cat on the block got its name, and that's how the friendship between this feline and Myla began. The zookeeper went to get the cheetah some food and water, and then she went around her daily duties to check on all the other animals at the zoo. When she came back to check on Luna that evening, she found her still in the same spot. She had not eaten anything at all. Myla was a little bit concerned, but thought the poor cat was just jet-lagged. After all, Luna had been flown all the way from Africa. It was normal for her to be tired, she thought, and she went home, promising herself to check on her first thing in the morning. The next day, Myla checked up on Luna first before going to the other animals. She found the feline still in the same position she had left her the day before, with the food still in the bowl, no sign of being touched at all. She was concerned. Normally, new animals in the zoo wouldn't stay put. They would be all over, sniffing and pawing at the glass, curious to know the secrets of their new environment. Was it something she should look into? She decided to give Luna a day to adjust before calling in the vet. Meanwhile, she thought it wise to stay and watch her behavior. She wanted to be sure that it was a matter of concern before involving the vet. She went around to check on the animals before entering the safe compartment in Luna's enclosure. She stayed the whole day by her side, taking note of every move she made. She could see it in her eyes that she was not well. She had not eaten or drunk anything since she arrived at the zoo. Myla even entered her compartment to feed her with her hand, but the cheetah didn't eat. She just looked at her with sad eyes. She couldn't stand it anymore. She had to call the vet first thing in the morning. Before leaving for the day, she informed the management of Luna's health. The vet came in the next morning to check on Luna. After giving the cheetah a health check, he told Myla that Luna was breathing at a heavier rate than normal and that he thought she might have had a cold before being transported to the zoo, which again developed into a more severe case of pneumonia due to climate change. Russia was a cold country and Luna was not used to the low temperatures. He prescribed some medicines for her and left her in the care of the keepers. Myla took on the responsibility of caring for Luna. Her heart went out to her. She was determined to help her and nurse her back to health. 
but the cheetah still refused to eat, making it difficult for Myla. The zookeeper was devastated. How could Luna recover without eating? The medicine wouldn't work on an empty stomach. She had to figure out a way to make her eat. After a lot of thinking, she decided to do what she does best, talk to animals. She was going to make Luna understand why it was important for her to eat and drink. She sneaked into her encounter and sat close to her. She stroked her fur, which was now rough due to sickness, and talked to her as if she could understand her. Luna's ears just twitched, but Myla knew that the twitch meant more than just movement of the ears. She had listened, and perhaps now she would be more amenable to eating. It was a relief for Myla when she laid her hand fed Luna and she agreed to eat. She was so happy. That simple change meant that Luna was going to recover and go back to herself. The following week, Myla dedicated herself to the cat's recovery. She provided her with medication, nutritious meals, and plenty of love and attention. She could not wait to see how adoring she would be when she wasn't sick. As Luna regained her strength, a deep bond formed between her and Myla. They became inseparable companions, exploring the zoo together, playing and sharing moments of pure joy. It was magical. The other zookeepers admired their relationship. However, as time went on, the zoo faced financial difficulties. It could no longer afford to care for Luna and some other animals in the zoo. Myla learned from a colleague that the management was planning to sell the animals to another zoo. Heartbroken at the thought of Luna being separated from her, Myla knew she had to find a way to keep the cheetah by her side. She approached the board and pleaded for Luna's stay at the zoo, but they informed her that keeping the cat in the zoo was financially straining them. They loved Luna, but it wasn't enough to keep her. Myla was sad in the coming days, and the cheetah sensed the energy. She ate a little less and was less playful, attuned to her favorite human's sour mood. In her final attempt to save Luna, Myla decided to approach her husband David with a plea to adopt the cheetah as their own. She knew it was going to be a hard decision for him, but she tried anyway. It was better than doing nothing. David was initially hesitant, concerned about the challenges of having a cheetah as a pet. He argued that keeping a wild predator wasn't the same as keeping a domesticated cat, as it would need a lot of care and money to make it as comfortable as possible. But as Myla shared Luna's story and the incredible bond they had formed, David's heart softened. He agreed to visit Luna at the zoo and see for himself the connection between Myla and the cheetah. He would then make his decision after the encounter. When David met Luna, it was love at first sight. He saw the trust and affection she had for Myla, and he couldn't deny the happiness she brought to his wife's life. With a newfound determination, David decided to buy Luna from the zoo and bring her home. Myla was extremely happy with the decision, but first they had to make some changes to accommodate the cheetah's presence. She needed a lot of space for her new home. So, they built her an open compartment in the compound and filled it with everything she might desire, from toys to a different place to eat and sleep. As Luna settled into her new life with Myla and David, their bond grew stronger each day. The cheetah became a cherished member of their family, bringing laughter and adventure into their lives. She would playfully chase after balls, curl up beside Mila and David on the couch, and even join them on walks during the weekends. From time to time, Myla would take her to the zoo to visit the other keepers, and she would enjoy every moment of her trips. Her colleagues were also happy to see that Luna had found a loving home and praised Myla for rescuing her twice, first when she was sick and now that she needed a new place to stay. But unbeknownst to them all, Luna was about to save Myla in turn. One weekend, when David was away on a business trip, Myla fell ill. She felt so weak that she could not get out of bed. It was past Luna's feeding time, and the cheetah wondered why her friend hadn't checked on her or given her food. Sensing that something was amiss, Luna went into the house using the pet flap David and Myla had made for her. She went straight to the bedroom to find her favorite human experiencing a severe asthma attack. 
Gasping for breath, she was desperately trying to reach for her inhaler, but it was nowhere to be found. Luna gave a low-pitched meow at seeing her friend in pain. At first, she did not know what to do to help. But unbeknownst to Myla, Luna had been observing her closely all this time. She had seen how David handled such situations and knew where they kept the emergency inhaler, inside the first aid kit. With a keen sense of understanding, Luna dashed out of the room, searching for the inhaler. She saw the first aid kit on the top shelf, but she was too big to get there without dropping things. Still, she calculated her steps and climbed on the counter to reach the top shelves. She did not care what she had to drop to get to the kit. Her friend's life was on the line. Moments later, Luna returned, gently holding the inhaler in her mouth. She nudged it towards Myla as if to say, Here, this will help you. Myla was amazed by Luna's intuition and grateful for her quick thinking. She had wondered where she had dashed to and had been more than a little worried about the sounds of dropped objects in the dining room, but now she knew that the cheetah was trying to help her. She smiled faintly. How could she thank her enough? With Luna's help, Myla was able to use the inhaler and regain her breath. Just as she caught her breath, David arrived home, greeted by Luna's urgent meows and frantic pacing. It was unusual for her to greet him in that way, and a cold chill ran down his spine. Where's Myla? he asked when he noticed that his wife was nowhere to be seen. Luna just meowed and went to the bedroom. When he saw the dishes on the living room floor, he sensed something was wrong. Had someone entered the house and attacked Myla? Panicked, he followed Luna out to find his wife in her bed, in distress. Myla, he cried. I'm okay now. Luna saved me, she assured him with her faint voice. Without hesitation, David rushed Myla to the hospital. When it came to his wife's health, he could not risk it just because she said she was feeling better. He had to take her to a specialist where she received the care she needed to recover. Luna's help had come in handy. The doctor informed David that if she hadn't received the inhaler in time, things would have taken a different turn. David was grateful for Luna's timely intervention. He couldn't stop wondering what would have happened if the cheetah wasn't there. Thankfully, Myla's recovery was swift. The bond between her, David and Luna grew even stronger as they realized the depth of Luna's love and loyalty. Luna had repaid the kindness shown to her by this couple in the most extraordinary way, saving Myla's life when she needed it the most. From that day forward, Myla, David, and Luna continued their journey together, sharing a bond that could never be broken. Luna's presence reminded them of the power of compassion, the strength of friendship, and the incredible ways in which animals can touch our lives. What an incredible ending! Do you have other human-animal heartwarming stories like this to share? If so, don't forget to tell us about it in the comment section below. We'd love to hear all about it. For now, we're out. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.